So, um, so right now, by default, Stellarium always launches in default location, Alameda for me, and uh, to uh, current time. And I think if I'm looking around now, um, I think the moon is almost uh, supposed to just barely rise. So I may be able to locate it. If not, I will just uh, advance the time a little bit, uh, which is my time control. Okay, uh, let me just advance the time a little bit. I can do that because it's a simulation. So, um, so I was saying, I'll try going out right after this session and look for the moon. Uh, and if I can find it through the cloud cover, I will take a photo and post it uh, where I am in the city of Alameda. Usually the sky is, I think, clearer than where I'm usually in Berkeley. So, okay, so this is one possible observing condition where the moon has just risen. So I'm looking eastward um, and, and, um, and this is what I mean, orienting yourself. Uh, you kind of have to know what direction you are looking at. So um, hopefully <laughs> wherever you are observing the moon, you are familiar with which direction is south, which direction is east to west. Um, or you can, uh, if you are doing this around the evening or morning, you can look at the brighter side of the sky. In the evening, the western side is the brighter side because that's where the sun has just set or is about to set. So, so you should know what direction you are looking at because um, that affects how you characterize which side of the moon is lit. So let me just zoom in here. Um, so I think at this zoom is about, is that right? Um, yeah, so I mean, you know, so how large it appears to be uh, depends on your particular physical screen that you're looking at. Uh, I'm looking at a 14 inch screen that's about foot and a half away. And at that distance, I think uh, uh, that's about the same size, same angular size of the moon that I'm looking at. So, so that's what I see. <laughs> and um, so looking at it, this is what I noticed. So this is quite close to full moon. and. Uh, um, and I'm kind of spoiling it a little bit here, but we are in the waxing phase. So the uh, least side will uh, grow larger over the next couple of days. So it'll become full moon soon. Um, so as I'm looking at this, this is what I notice. I notice that the darker side, the side that's not lit, that's uh, closer to the ground. And, um, and this is where orienting yourself becomes important because I know I'm looking eastward. So yeah, because I know I'm looking eastward, the side that's closer to the ground, that's gonna be the Eastern side. And the side that's farther away from ground, that's the Western side. And let me just zoom in a little bit more so that it comes out close, um, clearer in the recording. So uh, looking at this moon, after having oriented it myself, I would characterize this as, the either the western side being lit or the eastern side not being lit. Um, let me check the project description. I think I might be asking you to describe, uh, yeah, which side of the moon is lit. Uh, there's a, the, wait, is there a reason for that? No, you know, there isn't really a reason for that. So you can describe it either way, either way, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, but, um, it's important to describe it that way instead of saying, you know, that the side that's farther away from ground is lit, because that description it's a, uh, it's a contextual. Um, so let me advance the time a little bit. Let's advance the time until the moon is in the middle of the sky. So um, uh, let me just. Do I want to turn on grid? Uh, let me not. Um, so I'm just going to advance the time a little bit. Okay, and let me just keep tracking the moon. And I'm just gonna keep tracking the moon until it's directly due south. That's when it's the highest in the sky. Okay, almost there. Um, all right, that's almost directly due south. Yeah, I kind of remember seeing the moon, some, uh, something like that position. And um, so here, after having oriented yourself, you should know that you are looking directly to south. And as you look at the moon, you will see that it appears rotated a little bit, at least with respect to the ground. 
Now, when you look at it, it's not one particular side that's closer to the ground that's lit. It's uh, you know, it's either the the left side or the right side that's lit. So the the right side that's lit. Um, and this is where you kind of have to imagine yourself standing on top of a map. You are looking due south. Then I hope uh, as you are imagining yourself in the situation, you kind of have a sense that your right side is gonna be oh. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> right side is going to be west. <laughs> I'm imagining myself on I-80, and if I'm looking down south, <laughs> then my right hand side is the, uh, the, the, the Pacific, so that's the west, <laughs> and my left hand side is the, uh, is the east. Yeah. So, so here, when I see the right hand side of the moon is lit, I would describe it as western side being lit. You see how that this particular description is consistent at different times in both when the moon was just rising, when this side was actually oriented away from ground, and now when it's mid sky, the western side is still lit. So let me just wrap this up by um, looking to, so I don't know, maybe some people are out there at 3 a.m. Although I think today there will probably be too much cloud cover uh, when the moon is about to set. So, I mean, I'm not going to discourage anyone from giving it a try. If you want to give it a try, please do. But um, <laughs> if you're out there, then as you look at the moon as it's about to set, so again, you should orient yourself and know what direction you are looking at. You should know that you are looking mostly westward. And as you look, you will see that the moon now, yeah, okay, so this is ground. Um, the side that's closer to the ground is now lit. And this time, this is the western side because the, you are looking towards the uh, you are looking towards the west. So the side that's closer to the ground is the western side of moon, and the side that's farther away is the eastern side of moon. So, so that's a kind of the basic instruction for orienting yourself and um, locating the moon in the sky. And I, I have to say, this semester we are. Um, uh, we are a little bit lucky. We caught the moon in the right phase <laughs> um, because other than for the weather conditions, it's going to be much easier to observe the moon for the next week or so because it's uh, big and bright. It's up for the most part of the night. So it's going to be easy to locate it. Um, let me, so <laughs> in an attempt to encourage people to make the most of this time, let me show you what it'll look like. Um, let me give it a try maybe 10 days from now. So that's going to be what, July. Oh, let's try July 4th. Uh, I don't know when the moon would have risen that day, but uh, oh, I can do this. Let me just search. Moon. And um, we'll, oh, OK, it's up in the sky already. Uh, yeah, I think it rose just before, or it rose sometime before the sun. Okay, so this is probably not that bad. Um, so it's a crescent moon, and it's a reasonably uh, large portion of the moon is lit that you will probably be able to locate it during the daytime. Uh, and also, um, it's reasonably kind of angularly distant from the sun that you will you know, if you're up at 5 a.m., then you will have been able to see this uh, while the sky is still dark. Um, so let me go forward maybe a couple more days. Um, this, I think it's going to get worse in a couple of days. Yeah. So something like here. Um, so, you know, the, around this time is when I myself will provide more support and kind of look for the moon along with you guys and uh, if, uh, post the photos if I can find the moon. But uh, something like this, it's uh, one very difficult to find <laughs> unless you know uh, where the moon is exactly. And, um, and also um, if there's even a little bit of cloud in the sky, that'll make it difficult for you to identify the moon. And, uh, and this kind of a very crescent moon is where, unless you have a camera with a telephoto zoom, um, I, I tried taking photos of moon like this with my cell phone camera and it just didn't come out. Like I couldn't see anything. <laughs> the sky was just uh, it and um, 
that's when I broke up my uh, old camera with the optical joint. And it, it, you can actually take a photo of something like this. I have a photo from last summer that I can share if people want to see it. But um, yeah, so so we have about good uh, like week and a half, two weeks, and uh, where it'll be relatively easy to observe the moon. And I think it's good to get practice observing the moon during this time so that uh, this lasts for about five days because right now this is the waning crescent moon and um, so it has to go to new moon <laughs> and then it has to go a little bit of distance into a waxing crescent moon before you can kind of start to see it and my experience last summer and this was actually new to me because you know until I started teaching this class I've never tried to observe the moon because who does that? <laughs> for, <laughs> we'll try to move over the moon for a length of time. And uh, last summer, there was like five days when you just couldn't find the moon uh, unless you tried really hard and the weather conditions were perfect. So, um, so you know, th that five days of dark times will be at least a week and a half away. So, um, so you know, there'll be good times first. <laughs> and, and, um, and that's one of the reasons we are starting this project early. Um, instead of waiting until start of module three, we are starting now because um, there's a good chunk of the month when we can't really observe the month well. So I want you to start now so that we can actually get a month in before end of the semester. You can actually see a full cycle of moon. And as I was saying at the beginning of this description, it's a really experiential project. And in terms of number of points or grades, it's, you know, probably not gonna end up being that much. Um, although uh, I was saying just to before we started the recording how some people will realize as uh, we do the one-on-one -on -one meeting, me going over the kind of overview of where the grade is that the standards for homework is kind of strict. Um, um, but, the phases of the moon project, it ends up, I think the total number of points ends up being like 10 points or so, both of the preliminary um, observation project that's going to be due on Friday and the, the final um, observation uh, combined. So, so this isn't something that's uh, designed to cause stress or have a huge impact on the grade. None of those are intended. Uh, what is intended is that uh, that you have a kind of slice of experience uh, trying to make some uh, astronomical observation and uh, you'll face some difficulties and hopefully that will help you appreciate the hard work that the professional astronomers do, which doesn't include me. I was a professional physicist, but not astronomer. Um, and just to... Uh, uh, just why experimental science is hard. Because <laughs> uh, when you're doing experiment or observation, not everything goes the way you hope it will. So, and also, if you have some kind of decent uh, uh, camera equipment, I do really want to encourage you to try to take a photo of them. Uh, there were some people who tried that uh, last time and they really enjoyed it. They got some really good photos and uh, that um, that's I think is something. If that uh, um, if if you're in a situation where you can do that well, that's something that you can really take away from this uh, project. Um, do I want to share some of the photos? Uh, let me see if I um, I think I can do this. So uh, let me just uh, I transfer some of the photos to this computer. I think I can uh, navigate to that and bring it up. Um, did I delete them? Okay, I didn't delete them. Um, yeah, so this was one of the moon photos from last uh, uh, summer. I don't know if you can see it. So um, it took me quite a bit of time to actually locate the moon. I had to <laughs> figure out, okay, the sun is over there and the celestial equator goes this way. So the moon should be around there. And after a bit of searching, I did eventually find it. and. Um, yeah, yeah, felt too fulfilling to me when I found it. And I think I have one more that's from another day, uh, this one. I think this blurred out thing is a little tennis court that's uh, outside. Um, so I, I don't, well, I don't, well, I don't know why it's not the quite right description, but I was trying to include some ground features as I was taking this photo so that um, there's some sense of scale. Uh, 
so that's another one. And it, I think those two photos were on two different days. And I think it was on the waxing phase. So this is the one where, you know, so I'm, again, doing this full time over summer. I'm not doing anything else. I go out at the per best possible time. <laughs> um, and if you're not able to do that, that's totally fine. I'm not expecting that from other folks. Um, I think uh, after, um, the day after this one was where it was easier to see the moon, but that's when the project was ending. And last summer, we only had like three weeks for this, and that turned out to be not quite enough because there's a good chunk of the time that the moon is not visible. 